What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and today it is time for yet another Pokemon Generational Facts video. So far in this series, we have covered one distinct fact about every single Pokemon through the first four generations, and we are not stopping anytime soon, because today we are going to be covering the fifth generation of Pokemon in the Unova region. Now, Unova introduced the largest number of Pokemon from a single region to date with 156 Pokemon. And today we're going to be covering the first half of that list, which means we're going to be covering a whopping 78 Pokemon in this single video. I'm not gonna lie, this was a bit of a doozy to put together, but I am excited as heck to share these with you guys because we've got some great facts here. So without further ado, why don't you kick back, relax, get cozy, and get ready to hear some awesome facts about the Pokemon of the Unova region. Now, Unova is a bit unique because its Pokedex starts off with a mythical Pokemon in Victini, and Victini is actually Junichi Masuda's favorite Generation 5 Pokemon. On top of that, it is actually based around the letter V, not only because it is the victory Pokemon, but also because the letter V is the Roman numeral for 5, as in Generation 5, where this Pokemon debuted. When Snivy was first revealed, it was revealed without its English name, and so naturally, fans began to speculate about what the name of this new Pokemon could be, and the name that fans came up with was Smugleaf. Well, this fan name actually got so popular that it was actually mentioned in an issue of official Nintendo magazine in Australia and New Zealand, as well as its counterpart in the United Kingdom. Ken Sugimori has stated that Servine as well as Snivy and Superior are based on French royalty, and the reason why this is notable is because there are actually several other Unova Pokemon, namely the Swords of Justice, that are based on things that come out of France, and the reason why this is even more coincidental is because the very next generation after Generation 5, which is of course Generation 6, is based in a region that is based on France, which means that these ideas that they had for these Pokemon could have eventually inspired the French theme that we saw in the sixth generation of Pokemon. There is actually a superior in the Pokemon Adventures manga that was passed around to a number of different characters throughout its evolution line, including Cedric Juniper, N, and White, who is the manga counterpart to Hilda. Additionally, this superior's nickname is Amanda, and rather than being given this more human name because of a more traditional reason, the name literally comes from the Japanese words man and da, meaning vine and snake, respectively, and anaconda, which is the exact sort of way you'd give a Pokemon its actual name, rather than a nickname on top of that, which is a bit unusual. Next up is Tepig, and after starting the video with a couple long-winded facts, I am proud to share with you guys that Tepig's German name is Floink. Yes, I said Floink, let's move along. Coincidentally, Pig Knight was actually a popular name given to Tepig in English before either Tepig's name or Pig Knight's name were officially known. With its evolution to Embor, Ken Sugimori has also stated that Embor, Pig Knight, and Tepig were all designed in a Chinese style, and this is very notable because it falls in line with a popular fan theory that all of the fire starters are based on members of the Chinese Zodiac. Ken Sugimori has also said that Oshawott and its evolutions were the hardest Unova starters for the team to design, but they eventually settled on a theme of sea lions and otters after taking a trip to an aquarium and receiving some inspiration. Duat's name is actually a combination of a number of different things that make its name very creative and cool, as Duat is a combination of dew, water, and otter. However, it doesn't stop there because the author of the book The Last Samurai, which Duat is partially based on, is Helen DeWitt, whose last name is almost identical in spelling to Duat's name. With Samurott, Samurott actually has the longest cry of any starter Pokemon at a grand total of 2.099 seconds. If you look closely, you'll notice that Patrat is literally almost the same exact Pokemon that Sentret is, just based on different animals, because of course they are both the regional rodent of their respective regions, they are both known as the Scout Pokemon, and for good reason, because they are both partially based on different types of Scouts and Watchmen, with Sentret being based on a Sentry, who is a Scout from the air, and Patrat being based on a Patrolman, who is a Scout from the ground. Its evolution Watchhog is also the only evolved Pokemon with a catch rate of 255, which is the highest that a catch rate can possibly be. 
According to Lillipup's Sun Dex entry, because it doesn't yelp, it's extremely popular with trainers who live in apartment buildings. Now I can't help but feel like that last part of that Dex entry is a subtle nod to the fans of Pokemon who have grown up with the franchise and who are now all living in apartment buildings. According to Hertier's Ultra Moon Dex entry, it has been living with people for so long that portrayals of it can be found on the walls of caves from long, long ago. Well, that doesn't really sit too well with Hertier's origin because Hertier is based on the Yorkshire Terrier, who were developed and first bred as late as the 1800s. Looking once again at the Pokedex, in Stoutland's Ultra Sun Dex entry, it states that it pays no mind to the cold thanks to its long, warm coat. Stoutland and Alola look a little bit uncomfortable. Now, the last part of this Dex entry could actually be a reference to Stoutland in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, as not only does Stoutland play a significant role in the early part of the Sun and Moon anime, but it definitely looks generally uncomfortable thanks to certain circumstances as well. Now, call my vocabulary limited if you want, but one thing that I just barely found out about Purloin myself is that its name is literally based on the word Purloin. It's just straight up the word Purloin, which means to steal. It's just spelled with an extra R to also spell out the word Pur, which is the sound that a cat makes. Its evolution Lipard was actually going to make its anime debut in the 23rd episode of the black and white anime, but this episode ultimately was postponed and cancelled altogether due to the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami that happened around the time of its scheduled release. This caused Lipard to not debut in the anime until almost 100 episodes later in episode 105 of the Best Wishes series. The Pokemon Pansage was first seen by the public in toy form when an image of a Pansage toy started circulating the internet in July of 2010. However, nothing else was known about the Pokemon at the time. Later on in that year, in August of 2010, a fake Coral Coral leak also made its way to the internet featuring the image of Pansage as it was seen in the toy, which frankly made it out to be a little pudgy. However, Pansage was officially revealed later on in that month on August 22nd of 2010 by by the Pokemon Sunday Show. When it comes to Simisage, Simisage might actually be providing some competition to Braviary as the signature American Pokemon, because Simisage's name in Japanese is actually Yanaki, which comes likely from the word Yankee, which is a nickname used to refer to an American person. Believe it or not, Pansir is the only Pokemon not from Generation 1 that evolves with the use of a Firestone. And in the unexpected facts category, Simiseer actually ranked dead last in a Japanese Pokemon popularity poll that was used to determine which Pokemon would be distributed during the Japanese showings of the Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel movie. If there is one fun thing about the Elemental Monkeys, it is illustrated very well in Panpour's design, and that is that they all three represent the classic adage of the wise monkeys, hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil, with Panpour obviously representing see no evil with its eyes closed. Simipore actually received an update to its design after it was officially revealed because its official game artwork previously showed that its entire tail was blue instead of having its tail be tan with a blue tip like we see in its current official game artwork. There are actually a couple different references to Muna in games that come before the release of Pokemon Black and White. In Generation 1 in Red and Blue, as well as its remakes, you might know of the fact that there is a picnicker on Route 10 that says that she wishes that there was a pink Pokemon with a floral pattern, which perfectly describes Muna. However, also in Generation 3 in Ruby and Sapphire, there is an employee in the Devon Corporation that says he wants to create a machine that can visually reproduce the dreams of Pokemon. Pokemon, which is what the Dream Mist that Muna produces is able to do. An interesting thing about its evolution Musharna is that Musharna does not learn a single move by level up after level 1. Pidove is often seen as the least popular starting bird Pokemon, and it might be for a good reason because this Pokemon is kinda pretty stupid. According to the Pokedex, Pidove is unable to follow some of its trainer's commands if they get too complicated, and it will even wait for a new order from its trainer even though it already has one. 
Tranquil's Japanese name is Hatobo, which comes from the Japanese Hato, which means pigeon, and Bo, which means shaggy hair. However, there is also some more profound inspiration for Tranquil's Japanese name, because amongst the works of the author Kenji Miyazawa, there exists an ideal world that is known as Hihato. And according to the Pokedex entry in Pokemon White for Tranquil, it states that many people believe that deep in the forest where Tranquil live, there is a peaceful place where there is no war, which is likely a reference to Kenji Miyazawa's fictional world because not only does it match the description of Ihatov, but it also is similar in spelling to Tranquil's Japanese name, Hatobo. When it comes to its evolution on Pheasant, a significant trainer that owns an Unpheasant in Unova is Skyla. However, while Skyla's Unpheasant is female in the games as well as in the Pokemon Adventures manga, it actually shows up as male in the anime. The Pokemon Blitzel, even though it is an early game Pokemon, is rather rare because it can only be found in one location in two games, which is on Route 3 in Black and White. Whereas its evolution Zebstrika, which naturally should be a little bit harder to find in the wild than its pre-evolution, can be found in nine different locations across eight games, from Black and White all the way to Oraz. Speaking of Zebstrika, Zebstrika is known as the Thunderbolt Pokemon, which makes it one of only a few Pokemon whose species name in English is the same name as the name of a move. An interesting thing about Roggenrola is that the Pokedex tells us that it's actually a fairly recently discovered Pokemon, because according to its white Pokedex entry, they were discovered a hundred years ago in an earthquake fissure. Inside each one is an energy core. Bulldore is actually extremely similar to Graveler, because not only are both Pokemon rock types, but they were both introduced in an odd numbered generation, they both have the same exact base stat total of 390, they both evolve from their pre-evolved forms at level 25, and they both evolve again into their final forms by trading. Believe it or not, its evolution Gigalith is the only pure rock type third stage Pokemon that is currently in existence. Moving on to Woobat, Woobat is the only unevolved Pokemon that received an increase to its base stats in Generation 7, where many Pokemon did receive stat increases, but Woobat was the only unevolved one among them. Its evolution Swoobat might be known as the courting Pokemon, but it can also go from 0 to 100 really quick, because according to the Pokedex, anyone who comes into contact with the ultrasonic waves emitted by a courting male experiences a positive mood shift. But the Pokedex also tells us that those same ultrasonic waves are powerful enough to destroy concrete, so if you get involved with a Swoobat, uh, don't make it upset and don't break up with it over text, it's not a good idea. Drillbur's shiny coloration, while essentially swapping the colors of its nose and the markings on its body, also for the most part takes on the regular coloration of its evolution, Excadrill. Speaking of Excadrill's design, in early promotional videos for Pokemon Black and White, Excadrill actually had mirrored markings on its body and a different body coloring overall, being more of a purple color as opposed to a dark gray color. When it comes to Audino, the first and last moves learned by Audino by level up are in fact the exact same, and that move would be Last Resort. Just how Bulldore was very similar to Graveler, Timber is also very similar to Machop, because both are fighting type Pokemon that have the exact same base stat total of 305. They also have a male to female gender ratio of 3 to 1, and they are also most commonly associated in their respective regions with construction sites, and they also have guts as a possible ability, and they reach their first evolution by level up and have their final evolution reached by trading. And as if that wasn't enough, both of their shiny forms also have a similar soft yellow coloration. An ironic coincidence with Girder is that each of its evolutionary relatives are known for carrying a piece of building material along with them, and naturally, just like the Pokemon, you'd expect for these materials to grow stronger along with the Pokemon as it evolves. However, Girder, who carries a steel beam, is only the second evolution in this line, and it evolves into its final form, who carries concrete blocks, which are much weaker than the steel beam that Girder carries. You might not notice it from the surface, but 
but Conkelder's design is actually the result of one of the most strange combination of things that any Pokemon design has ever seen, because not only does it resemble an ogre from common folklore, but its pre-evolution Timber's Pokedex entry supports the fact that it, as well as his evolution Conkelder, is based on a construction worker. On top of that, due to the fact that it has a clown nose and an overly buff body, it's also possibly based on a muscle man carny person from a carnival, and finally, due to the way that it uses its concrete blocks as walking canes and it also has a grey tuft of hair under its chin, it is also most likely partially based on an elderly person as well. If you take a close look at Timple's design, you'll not only see that it is based on a tadpole, but you'll also see that it has a very musically inspired design as well. This odd combination of things actually comes from the fact that its Japanese name, Otamaru, actually is a Japanese word that can either mean tadpole or musical note. With its evolution Palpitoad, we actually have a very cool coincidence and possibly even a reference because in the anime, we of course saw Ash catch a Palpitoad and he added it to his team. And the last time we saw Ash catch a Pokemon that was already in its evolved state that he actually used on his team was Noctowl, which was caught 535 episodes before Palpitoad, which just so happens to be the Pokedex number of Palpitoad's pre-evolution, Temple. Its final evolution, Seismitoad, is also the only non-poison type Pokemon who can actually legitimately have the ability Poison Touch. For our fact on throw, it was stated in an interview with Ken Sugimori in Nintendo Dream Magazine that originally Sock as well as its counterpart Throw looked a lot like Tornadus and Thunderous, because not only were Tornadus and Thunderous both red and blue originally, just like Throw and Sock are now, but Throw and Sock themselves also had horns originally, which made them look even more so like Tornadus and Thunderous. Sock, as well as its counterpart Throw, are often seen as the Generation 5 equivalent to Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. And just like Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, Sock is also based on a well-known martial art expert, that being none other than Mas Oyama, who is a well-known karate expert and the creator of Kyoku Shinkai Karate. We've mentioned with a couple other Pokemon in this list that they were first revealed by unusual means. Well, this definitely applies to Sawaddle as well, because believe it or not, Sawaddle was first seen on the official Pokemon page of none other than Yahoo.com. Just like Musharna before it, Swadloon is another Pokemon that cannot learn any moves by level up after level 1, except for when it learns Protect when it evolves into Levani. You might think that Levani's name comes from the combination of the words leaves and nanny, and you would more or less be right. However, what you might not know is that it also comes from Levana, who was the ancient Roman goddess of newborn babies. When it comes to Venipede, there is actually a continuity error in the episode that Venipede debuted in in the Pokemon anime, which was a Venipede Stampede. In the original episode, a bunch of Venipede came from the desert resort and invaded Castelia City, and at the end of the episode, Professor Juniper, as well as Ash and friends, went to the desert resort to find out what was going on that drove the Venipede from there to Castelia City. However, because of the aforementioned 23rd as well as the 24th episode of the black and white anime, may be skipped, an entire scene from this episode was cut out of the dub where Ash, Iris, and Silent insist on accompanying Professor Juniper to the desert resort, and the narrator's lines were also changed from saying that Ash and friends would accompany Professor Juniper to the desert resort to saying that Ash is looking forward to his next gym battle. Ironically enough, Whirlipede's category as the Curlipede Pokemon actually sounds like a more accurate name for Whirlipede than Whirlipede actually does itself. Its final evolution, Scolipede, is actually a very big boy, being the tallest of all bug Pokemon at 8 feet 2 inches, as well as being the heaviest Poison-type Pokemon at 442 pounds. When it comes to Cottony, you might think that it's pretty straightforward that Cottony is based on a ball of cotton, and while you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, it's got more to its design as well, because Cottony is also based on the appearance of a sheep head, which coincides with its cotton being like that of a sheep's wool. According to Whimsicott's trophy information in Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS, these Pokemon like to move furniture around. However, I don't really know how they would do that, considering they're only 2 feet 4 inches tall and weigh only 14.6 pounds. 
In Generation 5, Petalil's artwork actually sits between the two as well, not being exactly like either one of them. This was actually fixed in Generation 6, where its art matches its regular form and its shiny has been made more yellow to differentiate it from its regular form and artwork. Its evolution, Lilligant, evolves from Petalil with the use of a Sunstone, but you'll want to be very careful about when you evolve it, because Lilligant only learns a grand total of four moves by level up after level one. So you might think that Basculin is a rather boring Pokemon, but let me tell you, it has got a lot going on with its abilities that not only make it interesting, but also rather confusing as well. In Pokemon Black and White, both Blue Striped and Red Striped Basculin have the same two possible abilities, that being Reckless and Adaptability. However, there is a Blue Striped Basculin that you can get traded to you in Pokemon White that has the ability Rockhead. Going forward with this, in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, Blue Striped Basculin's possible abilities have now been changed to include Rockhead as well as Adaptability, while the Red Striped Basculin's possible abilities stay the same. However, if you breed a Blue Striped Basculin in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, it will have either Reckless or Adaptability as its possible abilities, like it did in Pokemon Black and White. However, one more thing about the Blue Striped Basculin is that if you take a Blue Striped Basculin with Reckless and transfer it from generation 5 to generation 6, its ability will be changed to Rockhead. Holy cow, what a mess. When it comes to Sandile, no other Pokemon has the same type combination of Ground Dark as Sandile or its evolutionary relatives. An interesting thing about Karakarok is that in the anime, it took 62 episodes from the point when Karakarok initially debuted as a Sandile to the point that Ash eventually caught it, which is longer than any other Pokemon in the entire series. According to Crocodile's black Pokedex entry, they never allow prey to escape. Their jaws are so powerful they can crush the body of an automobile. Now, if you've been keeping up with this generational facts series, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, but just, uh, hold on to that thought for like two seconds. According to Darumaka's white Pokedex entry, Darumaka's droppings are hot, so people used to put them in their clothes in order to keep themselves warm. So, uh, you're trying to tell me that people put Darumaka poop in their clothes just to keep warm? All I gotta say is thank Arceus for technology. And I hope you have that fact about Crocodile still in your mind, because according to Darmanitan's black Pokedex entry, its internal fire burns at 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, making enough power that it can destroy a dump truck with one punch. Now, not only is this funny, because we just had a Pokedex entry from a Pokemon two spaces before this in the Pokedex also talk about how it can easily destroy a car, but the thing that makes this even funnier is that if you watched my Sinnoh Pokemon facts, video, you would know that this same exact thing happened in the Sinnoh Pokedex, where we had two different Pokemon that were two spaces away from each other in the Pokedex, both talking about in their Pokedex entries how they could destroy a car with their immense power. I just don't really get what the fascination is with cars and why every other Pokemon in the Pokedex has to talk about it. A funny thing about Maractus is that even though it is a cactus Pokemon and therefore is naturally found in the desert, and Maractus can only be found in the desert resort in Generation 5, it does not have any type of ability or typing that prevents it from being damaged by the sandstorm weather condition. And it just so happens that in the desert resort, the only place where you can find Maractus, there is a permanent sandstorm that is going on all the time. Moving on to Dwebble, even though Dwebble is a Hermit Crab Pokemon, it is a Bug Rock type and not part Water type like you would expect it to be, being based on an aquatic creature. However, the reason why it has this Bug typing as opposed to the Water type is because it is a Crustacean, and some Crustaceans, believe it or not, are actually more closely related to insects than they are to other Crustaceans. A funny thing about its evolution, Crustal, is that the possible abilities it can have are Sturdy and Shell Armor, which literally refer to its Sturdy Shell Armor, however, its hidden ability, ironically enough, is Weak Armor. Scraggy's species title is the Shedding Pokemon, which fits its lizard-like design and baggy pants feature perfectly. However, this is kind of inconsistent with information from the Pokedex, where it says that Scraggy's skin is baggy because it's rubbery and stretchy rather than it's shedding, and it makes no mention of any type of shedding whatsoever. 
A very funny and interesting thing about Scrafty is that Scrafty debuted in the anime in the episode Meowth's Scrafty Tactics, and in the Latin American dub of this episode, there is a sequence in which Meowth is trying to distract a Scrafty, and instead of saying something along the lines of Scrafty, look over there, what is that, he actually says, que horror, los de Digimon, which roughly translates to, holy crap, look over there, there's a Digimon. Moving on to Sigilyph, Sigilyph is the only Pokemon that is able to have the ability Wonder Skin that does not have it as a hidden ability. Yawmask gets its name from the word mask, as well as a combination of a bunch of different possible words, including Yami, which means darkness, Ya, which means bad, or Yama, who is the Lord of the Dead in Hindu and Buddhist mythology. That being said, another possible inspiration for Yamask's name is that it's literally like you're saying, Yamask, as in your mask, referring to their human masks that they carry from their previous life. Going back to another anime fact, Kofagrigus made its debut in the anime in the episode Explorers of the Hero's Ruin, and another thing that made its debut in this episode is the move Mirror Move, despite the fact that this is a Generation 1 move, and the episode in which it debuted is the 721st episode of the Pokemon anime. When it comes to Tortuga, Tortuga might have made its official debut long before Generation 5 when it first appeared in an actual Pokemon game, because in the April 1997 issue of a Japanese game magazine that featured the announcement of Pokemon Gold and Silver, a Pokemon that bears a striking resemblance to Tortuga was featured on the front cover. In Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, the Pokemon Caracosta actually references one of the very popular Shia LaBeouf memes when it says the quote, Don't let your dreams just be dreams. When it comes to Archon, Archon and its evolution Archaeops are the only fossil Pokemon without hidden abilities. And to make things even worse, its regular ability Defeatist, which is its signature ability, is terrible because what it does is when you hit half health or below half health, it halves the attack and special attack of these two Pokemon. With its evolution Archaeops, Archaeops is the only Pokemon that has the base stat total of 567, and that number is rather important because it means that Archaeops is also the only Pokemon whose base stat total matches its national Pokedex number, which is also 567. However, it goes even farther than this because the number 567 is also a part of the Dewey Decimal System where information on dinosaurs is categorized under it. As we've talked about throughout this video, the Pokemon of Generation 5 were revealed in a number of different mediums, unlike today where they are for the most part revealed in official trailers and Koro Koro leaks. That being said, the Pokemon Trubbish was actually internationally revealed in the opening for the Pokemon Black and White anime. Garbodor is a rather controversial Pokemon for the simple fact that it is a Pokemon that is based on a pile of garbage. However, Garbodor's design takes a rather dark and serious turn when you consider that its Japanese name Dustedus possibly incorporates the phrase dust to dust, which is a part of the larger phrase ashes to ashes, dust to dust, which is basically a metaphor for the finality of death. Yikes. An interesting thing about Zorua is that Zorua and its evolved form Zoroark are the only non-mythical Pokemon to have been event exclusive for a period of time prior to the release of Pokemon Black and White 2, meaning that you could not even finish the regular Pokedex outside of Legendaries and Mythicals without this special event to access Zoroark in the original Pokemon Black and White. And last but not least, the final Pokemon we're going to be covering in this video is Zoroark, and Zoroark is a very interesting Pokemon for a number of different reasons. However, the reason we're going to be highlighting in this video is the fact that it's actually very similar to another Pokemon from a previous generation, and that Pokemon would be Lucario. Not only are both of these Pokemon essentially mascots of their respective generations, but they also appeared in movies that debuted just before the official release of their respective generations. On top of that, they are both bipedal Pokemon that are more or less based on similar animals, and on top of that, they both have the same exact name, which is Lucario and Zoroark, in the Japanese as well as the English versions of the games. They also have the same exact gender ratio, are in the same exact field egg group, group, and probably weirdest of all, need the same exact amount of experience in order to reach level 100, that number being 1,059,860 experience points. 
And there we have it, everybody. That was the first half of 156 facts about every single Unova Pokemon. If you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because I know this is a doozy of a video, but at the same time, it's so much fun to learn a lot about so many different Pokemon. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below which of these facts you enjoyed the most or if you have another fact about another Unova Pokemon you would like to share. The second part to this video comes covering the second half of the Unova decks will be up exactly one week from today, next Thursday, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet for that, as well as way more Pokemon content that I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as well as my Let's Play videos that I upload every Monday and Friday. I would also like to give a kind recommendation to my Spotify if you are into Pokemon music and remixes, because a ton of my personal Pokemon remixes are over on Spotify, and I'm really trying to build my Spotify up as much as I can, so so any and all support I could get from you guys over there would be massively appreciated. With all of that being said though, I will be back on Saturday for another video, and until then as always, you know I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.